this video on particle physics. This is the structure of matter introduction. And first, I will begin with an explanation of the standard model. So the standard model is the name given to theory of fundamental particles and how they interact. It incorporates all that is known about sub subatomic particles and there are some predictions about the existence of additional particles as well. The standard model serves as the basic building block of how matter interacts and how matter is governed by fundament fundamental forces. <laughs> So we have heard of small particles like electron, proton, neutron, but in this particle physics topic there are even smaller particles and they have their own names as well. So I will begin with the elementary particles. These are the smallest particles. So there are two types of elementary particles. They are divided into fermions. and bosons and fermions are divided into two even smaller categories which are quarks and leptons so first we'll begin with the quarks there are six types up down charm Strange, top, and bottom. And when we write reactions, they're actually abbreviated like U, D, C, S, T, and V. And we'll get it. We'll get into the details later. First, I'll explain what kinds of particles there are. So, the basic leptons are. The electron, which we have all heard of, muon, and tau, and these have the neutrino particles as well. So these are the neutrino is is uh, shown with a V. So an electron neutrino is VE, muon neutrino. Uh, it's usually abbreviated with the Greek letter mu, and tau is a Greek letter um, tau, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's tau, okay. And so this is bu, and this is vt. So these are the neutrinos, as I explained. And the word ne neutrino, like neutral, uh, th this means this you might guess that it's neutral and it is true these have a charge these all have a charge of zero but these three particles have a charge of negative one you might know that electron has a charge of negative one but neon and tau also have a charge of negative one and these are sometimes uh, shown as mu minus and tau minus and that's also fine just it's just showing the charge of the particle but sometimes in, you will see that these particles have an antiparticle which is a uh, the which have the antiparticle the definition of an antiparticle is a particle that has the opposite charge so these will have a charge of plus one and these are the positron which is an antiparticle of an electron and mu plus and d plus okay so we are done with the leptons and I'll go back to the quarks so these three quarks have a charge of plus 2 over 3 and these three quarks have a charge charge of negative uh, hat, negative third. So next we'll go into the bosons. There are I say four type four main types of bosons. 
these are the gluon photon, the W plus or minus boson, and the Z boson. And I will include the Higgs boson as well because it is recently discovered, it's very recent. But sometimes it's considered as a fundamental fundamental force and sometimes it's not. So yeah, I'll just write this up here. So these are the exchange particles or the force carriers. For example, the photon photon has infinite range. And I will I will get to these later because there's a separate section for these particles. And now we can go to this, these are elementary charges. Now we can go to the composite composite particles, which are particles that are made of these smaller particles that I explained right now. So these are called hadrons, and hadrons there are two categories: baryon and meson. The main difference between these two is that baryon is consisted of uh, three, three fermions and these are consisted of uh, two, two quarks actually, three quarks, two quarks. So a baryon is actually, the main baryons, the common baryons are ones that we, we have all heard of, which includes the proton and mu. Tron. So many of you might think that, oh, I thought this was the small, sm smallest particle, but no, that is the wrong answer. There are smaller particles. So proton is made of two up quarks from here and one down quark. So if you do the charge calculation, it's plus two thirds plus two thirds minus one third equals plus one. So it might might make sense. Now we can try the same thing with the neutron which is consisted of one up down one up quark and two down quarks and if we do the charge calculation it's one two third and two times one third which equals zero so yeah these are these two particles are baryons I mean there are a lot more but these are the common ones and we can prove by just comparing the charges. So now we go into meson. These are the less obvious ones. For example, there's a pion and kaon. And when we're doing mesons, we, we kind of have to go back to the quarks. As I said, there are antiparticles like this. There are actually antiparticles for quarks as well, which is, I'll just write down the symbols. Anti up, there's a line going up. Anti down anti-charm, anti-strange, anti-top, and anti-bottom. So basically, these have the opposite charge, which is negative two-thirds, and these have charge of plus one-third. Okay, so these antiparticles can be used when, when we write the formula for a meson. So pion, there are, there are actually three, three types of pions. There is a pi 0 and pi plus pi minus and pion is made of mainly up up and down quarks and anti up and anti down quarks so as you, as i said before if there is an quark and an anti quark they cancel each other out so the charge becomes zero so for example for pi 0 particle there can be a up and an anti-up quark or a down and an anti-down quark. For plus there is an up and an anti-down. So if we do the charges again this has a charge of two-thirds plus anti-down is one-third. So this is a plus one charge. This is a down anti-up. So down is negative one-third, anti-up is negative two-thirds which adds up to negative one. So Basically, the same same thing happens for the kaon as well. So there's k kaon uh, neutral, k zero, k plus, and k minus, and these are all made of either 
down, up, or strange, or a mix. So K0 can either be down, strange, anti-strange, or anti-down, strange. And strange cork, I haven't seen that much before, but it's not that, it's not that difficult. So anti-strange has a one-third, and one down cork has negative one-third to cancel out. This, this is pretty much the same thing, because when you change the antiparticle, when you switch it, the charges just are the opposite of each other, so opposite of zero would be zero. So K plus is one up, and I think one up plus, so it should be an anti-strange, yes. Okay, so this is a plus one, and K minus should be the same particles, but the this thing, the line moves to the other particle, which means the charges have switched. So yeah, this is like the basics of the hadron and meson. I mean, there are much more than this, but this is the basics of naming and how to calculate the charges. And we, we will go in depth more about this. And this will be explained, how these are used, will be explained in the next section, which is running nuclear equations. Okay, so in this section we'll be talking about using these particles that we talked about in the last section to write nuclear equations. So, if you took chemistry, it might be similar because uh, there are some parts going into turning into another part. So, for I'll just write an example, an, an example nuclear equation, and one of them is a proton transforming into neutron. So this one is proton into a neutron, but that's not, that's obviously not the end because pro, a proton doesn't just turn into a neutron. There are other parts. For example, there's a pi minus uh, meson involved, and another example is uh, pi minus again, and a proton it becomes. A K, K plus particle plus, uh, I don't know what this is, um, alpha, delta, zero particle. And usually, actually I'll go into the last one, just an example. Um, neon plus particle turning into a positron, uh, electron neutrino, and uh, muon anti neutrino. So, these are just examples of part. These are just examples of uh, nuclear equations. And in the next section, I will there will be a proof of either whether these reactions actually work or not, which is uh, governed by conservation laws. But these are just examples of some some equations, and they all work because they all obey the conser conservation laws. So. I'll just skip to the next section right now, just an explanation of uh, the conservation laws, and I'll come back to to what's it called the uh, nuclear equations to see how they how they work, how the conservation laws are obeyed. Okay, so these are conservation laws. So there are, like, there are a lot of conservation of law in science, for example, conservation of mass, energy, and momentum. But there are a lot of conservation laws in nuclear physics as well. So first we'll begin with the basic ones. This is conservation of charge, lepton number, and baryon number as well. And, and also I'll just include it in the same thing, because there are they deal with numbers, which I will explain after I list them. And some complex ones are mass energy, equivalence, momentum, and spin. 
since this is a standard level course, I will only get to these these uh, these four conservation laws. Okay. So first, we'll begin a charge because this is quite simple. So I'll go. I'll just go back to the the first slide because there were, there were charges. So let's just go back to the elementary first, okay? Every particle has a charge, even if it means zero. So for example, these quarks have charges and bosons are not charges because bosons are, as you can see, they're not involved in these equations. So I will get to bosons later. But fermions, fermions have charge and the quarks, the leptons, and these fermions make up the composite hadrons, and which means the hadron has to have charge. So, in here, these are a bunch of mesons and uh, baryons and leptons. So, there, there are charges going on in these equations, which I will get to later. So now it's time for lepton number. After I finish these two, I'll actually apply these to the equations, okay? So, lepton baryon strangeness number. So, lepton... Okay, I have to go back here to remind you guys. Leptons are these parts, okay? Electron, muon, and tau, they're the main ones. So, I'll just list them here, lepton. My, there, there's some confusion, but it's actually quite a simple concept. So, Lepton, now the first thing I'm going to explain is that if, if it's not a lepton, its number is zero, okay? If it's not a lepton, its lepton number is zero, okay? It has to be, because if it's not a lepton, then there's no number. So if, if it's not a lepton number, it's a zero, okay? But if it's a lepton, which includes um, the electron, the... Neon. I'll just put the minus just to show the charge and tau. And of course, I told you there are antiparticles as well. Um, which called um, tau plus and neutrinos. Yes, and uh, the neutrinos have their own antiparticles. So these, as you can see, these are antiparticles. These are the original particles. The leptons, these have a number of one. Antiparticles have a, have a number of negative one. That's it, actually. So if it's not a lepton, zero. If it is a lepton or a lepton neutrino, which is also a lepton, it's a 1. If it's the antiparticles, it's a negative 1. And this is basically the same for baryon as well. If it's a baryon, then it's, it's 1. It's, if it's not a baryon, it's not 1, it's 0. Yeah, baryon, baryon, it's pretty much the same. If it's a baryon, it, here, I'll just write it down. There is two there is three possibilities for this, okay? Baryon, antibaryon, or not baryon. Baryon is it is it a baryon? Yes, one. Is it an antibaryon? Yes. Neither one. If it's neither, zero, okay? That that's pretty much it. But the strangeness number it's a little different because you have to kind of think the opposite way, okay? So a strange one strange uh, quark has a strangeness number of negative one. Okay, strangeness. And an anti strange has a strangeness number of one. That's it. So, for example, if there, there are two, if there happens to be two, or let's say three, SSS, this is actually not possible, but I'll get to this how there can be three. They have the same uh, quarks, the same fermions, occupying the same area, but 
this, for example, this has negative 3. If 3 happens to be a 3 anti strange, that's uh, number, that's 3. So it's this is uh, in terms of quarks, okay? So that's pretty much it. So now we'll go back to the, the equations, okay? So the first step you gotta take to do this equation is divide it into quarks. So usually in the test they're given the uh, what for example what uh, what a pion is pion minus particle is made of. Usually it's given, so you don't really need to worry about it. You just need to know the rules. So this is a anti up down, and I think these you have to memorize. Proton is always up up down. Neutron is always up down down. And this particle happens to be a down and an anti down quark pair. So I'll just. Uh, yeah, I'll just start with this, okay? So, we talked about the four kinds of, uh, four kinds of conservation laws. So we have to like test them if these work. So, as I told you, it's charge, lepton number, baryon number, and a strange number. Okay, first of all, do you see any strange quarks here? No, so strange is automatic conserved. We don't need to worry about this, okay? Baryon number. Let's see what a baryon is. Baryon, as you can see, uh, okay, I'll, since this is like for dummies, I will be nice and flip. Baryon has three quarks, means it has two quarks. So obviously, there are two baryon, two baryons total, one on each side. So this is conserved. Lepton number. Let's see what a lepton is. Do you see any leptons here? Leptons are like, they're, they're individual. They're not really, they're fermions. They're not really uh, made of two quarks. So no, so we only need to worry about charge in this case. So let's compare the charges, okay? So this is, I mean, proton and neutron, um, we, we, we already know it's plus one and zero. So we, let's see these. So down an anti-quark, if there's an, okay, this is another rule. If there's a quark and an anti-quark pair, it's always zero, okay? So this will be zero because there's one down and one anti-down and this, we know that one up, is a two thirds and anti up would be negative two thirds plus a down is a negative uh, third so this is uh, negative one total this so in, in this equation as a whole let's see if charge is conserved okay zero on this side minus one plus one is zero so yes charge is conserved so this obeys all the conservation laws okay so next we uh, as usual, we fill out the, uh, what's it called, the uh, core constituents, up, up, down, k on, um, I think it's down strange, I believe, because it's a zero, and what, uh, I, I'll have to look for this, it's, it's a UDS, so yeah, charge, I'll just abbreviate this, okay, charge, you know, you already know what it is, okay. So, okay, so I, I like to start from the bottom because it's, it's, it's less common because, for example, we didn't even have to worry about strangers because there are no strange quarks, but as you can see, there are strange quarks here, okay? So strange, strangeness, we, we don't see any strange here, so strangeness would be zero on, okay, left side, right side, strangeness is zero. Here is a, okay, here's another quark anti-quark pair, so... That means it's a zero automatically, so strange is conserved. Baryon. So this is two, three quarks, two, three quarks. So baryon is conserved. One baryon on one side, one baryon on the other side. Lepton. Um, there are no leptons here, as usual. Okay. If you if you need to skip back a little bit to see why there is no lepton, uh, like this case, please uh, go back a little bit. And charge. Okay, charge. Yeah, so usually there's uh, the charge is the most, it takes the most effort to calculate. So these symbols right here, as you can see, they, they make things so much easier because they already tell you the charge. So this is a charge of zero. I'll just cancel out these numbers because they're confusing. Zero. K zero, zero. Proton we know is a one. And negative, uh, I mean, it, if there's a negative, it just means it's negative one as you can see here 
I did the calculation for you just to show the steps, but the easy step is just to see the signs here unless unless there is something else, but usually it's right. So charge is uh, zero on here, zero on here, left on zero, zero. Okay, so this works. So we'll just get to the last one. This is just an explanation of uh, how this works, how to see if if the interaction is possible or not. Okay, so charge is actually, I said it's complicated. It, it might be complicated, but honestly, if you look at the, at the signs, I'll just do it really quick right now. There's a plus one here, so there's plus one. Plus means plus one V. If you see a V, it's always zero charge because it's a neutrino neutral, okay? Neutrino neutral, it's a good way to memorize. And this is also actually zero because even if it's an antiparticle, it has to have the negative, has the opposite charge, but opposite zero is zero. So charge is conserved. Lepton number, yes, we do. We actually do see some leptons here because if you if we divide these up, uh, so a muon, uh, muon along with tau is a lepton. So this is a lepton, 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 lepton. So if we see a baryon and strange, I'll just list them first. No strange. These are all leptons, which means uh, it's such a lepton. It's not a baryon or so, or a strange quark. So. Let's show, these are automatically conserved and we have to worry about the lepton number, okay? So, uh, a lepton, just a normal lepton, electron, muon, tau is a negative, but these, as you can see, it's, a, it's an antiparticle, it's a positron with a po plus, and this is a neutrino, so positron and antiparticle, this is an antiparticle as well, by the way, and these have, okay, I'll just be nice and go back to the thing. So, the negative charge and the neutrino have left on numbers 1 and the positive antiparticles and the, the neutrino antiparticles have negative 1. So this is a positive, negative 1, negative 1, plus, uh, plus 1. So negative 1, negative, plus, negative 1. So these two cancel out and we're left to the negative 1 on each side. So yes, left on number is conserved. Okay, so that is a little summary of uh, how nuclear equations work, and well, this is how this is just a test of how to see if they they work or not. So yeah, that's an important skill to have when learning particle physics. So as you can see, I've come back to the first page. And I, I said I'll come back, and we're now going to talk about uh, force and exchange particles, we, which are bosons. So you see these five, okay? So now I will explain them. So as I said, there are uh, four. These are these are, by the way, about force and exchange particles. And what what these do is they they serve as a force carrier or exchange particle when there's a reaction. So I'll go put back to the reaction chart. So when these things happen, like what what is the particle that mediates or allows these to happen? And these, when when there's a reaction and error, I I have said this before, but uh, there are four main ones: gluon, photon. W plus or minus boson, Z boson. So the, these are some main bosons which allow the reactions to happen. Okay. And uh, as I said, there's a Higgs, Higgs boson as well. And this is a special one, and I will have a special section at the end of the video dedicated to Higgs boson. And there's a graviton as well, which is a theoretical particle. That is, is believed to uh, mediate gravity and the force of gravity, okay? And these are sometimes called as gauge bosons. 
And Higgs boson is a by the way scalar. And if the graviton was real, it fit in here. So yeah, these are the four main ones. So now we'll go to into the force part, okay? So in here, for example, the force is obviously gravity, force of gravity. But there are other forces as well, such as a weak, strong, and uh, electromagnetic. Okay, so the weak forces are between quarks and leptons. So, for example, in these, in, in with quarks and leptons, there there is a weak force. And strong force is uh, can also be with quarks and gluons as well. And E uh, electromagnetic is uh, or charged particles. So it's a pretty difficult concept. So I go I won't go in too far since this is like the basics, but this is mediated by the gamma ray or photon. Okay, so. This, uh, if you connect these, it's here, W boson is weak force, Z boson is also weak force, and gluon is a uh, strong force. There's some color, the gluon also affects the color, okay? So now that we know how to do this, we can go into a concept called the Feynman diagram, okay? Feynman diagram. So Feynman diagram was invented by uh, Mr. Richard Feynman, the famous uh, physicist uh, from the from the U.S. and it, it's really helpful when displaying when when diagramming nuclear reactions. For for example, we can we can use this uh, last one as an example. But the thing is, it, it doesn't really show. The, de the exact details of the reaction, okay? Because this is, as you can see, it's like leptons and quarks, so there is a W boson, plus or minus boson, mediating this, but you can't really see that in this, so what a Feynman diagram allows you to do is see, see, see everything, basically, okay? So I'll, I'll transfer this equation and draw it. So, so the, the equation we had here was uh, muon plus decays into positron, electron neutrino, and uh, anti muon neutrino. Okay, so just I'll just copy this thing down. Okay, so four parts. Okay, they're all leptons. No quarks involved. First, we start with time. So this is a starting point, okay? So we're starting with the uh, muon decay, but this uh, actually goes back into time because the antiparticles goes back into time, and uh, we draw how this is mediated with this uh, W boson, W plus boson, and there are the products as well. Okay, I made a little mistake here. This is it's not supposed to be here because there are three antiparticles. One one uh, normal particle, so this is time, and this is space. So first of all, there's a negative muon, which is basically a muon plus because it's an antiparticle. Then there's an antiparticle of this, which is a neutrino of uh, the, the antiparticle of the neutrino of the the pion. Okay, no, no, the muon. Now this side we can put positron and electron neutrino, okay? So now, this is pretty much good, but you need to put errors, okay? So, if the particle is an antiparticle, it goes back in time. So, since time is goes that way, this goes like back in time. So this goes, these two are both antiparticles, so these are going back in time. So we can guess that positron also has to go back in time. However, the electron neutrino goes front in time because this uh, neutrino is uh, it's not an antiparticle, it's just a normal lepton. Okay, so this is a basic 
Platinum diagram. We won't go too deep because this is only a course for very beginners. But this is how you can make uh, arrows and uh, show that there's a W plus boson carrying this thing. So one of the last concepts we'll be covering here is the quark confinement. So this is uh, constituted by a uh, Pauli exclusion exam uh, principle. So this principle, uh, I won't write it down because it's kind of long, but it basically says two identical fermions cannot occupy the same quantum space. So that is a definition, but you might be thinking, yo, what does this mean? But let's, let's go to one example that did not obey this Pauli exclusion principle, okay? I can find one for you. Yes, here it is. So this is a fermion, and these are three identical fermions, okay? It's a three strange quarks, but technically this cannot be like this because it does not uh, does not accept the uh, Pauli exclusion principle because these are three identical fermions. Okay, two, but it works because of one reason. Okay, and that's colors. And this is a related topic called uh, quantum chromodynamics, but. Again, this is a very basic course, so this is a very advanced topic, so we will not go into this. I will just explain the basics of colors, okay? So, there are three colors, uh, red, green, blue. And, of course, there has to be anti-color as well, so, yeah, anti-red, anti-green, and anti-blue. Okay? So, let's say we have three strange quarks, which cannot obviously be the same, but if we assign colors to them, they they are not identical anymore. For example, this can be a red strange quark, red, green, uh, green strange quark, and blue strange quark. So, I'm trying to be as basic as possible since this is uh, the video for dummies. I'm not actually saying you're, you're dumb, but like for very beginners. So, we, to be really simple, if we can assign colors to the same, same type of fermion, or a quark, then they're technically not identical, so they they obey the Pauli exclusion principle and therefore they are able to exist in the same quantum space. So that's like the basics, that's the very basics of this this concept. There are more colors obviously and this again this quantum kernel in dynamic it's a huge it's a very big topic to cover in uh, one video. I think if you want to know more about it, I have to create a separate video, but anyways, this is quark the basics of uh, quark confinement and the Pauli exclusion principle. Okay, so as we reach the end of the video, we have a new topic called uh, the Higgs boson, okay? This is a very big topic. So, we, we, we saw this before. Like uh, Higgs boson right here. So I never really talked about it because I said I'll leave it until the end. Yeah, Higgs boson right, right here. Higgs boson. So there's, there's not much really to draw here. Uh, maybe just take some notes. So this is uh, sometimes referred uh, to as the God particle, and this was discovered by. Uh, a science named, scientist named Peter Higgs from uh, the UK and in 2000, around 2012 the, in the Large Hadron Collider in uh, Geneva, Switzerland in the, in the nuclear uh, physics laboratory they, they found this Higgs boson and this guy called Peter Higgs who actually won the Nobel Prize in physics a few years ago predicted that there would be such a boson and it happened to exist. So now, what is the Higgs boson? So the standard model of particle physics shows how elementary particles and the forces interact in the universe, but it fails to explain how particles actually get their mass. So the Higgs boson scientists say that it, it's a particle that gives all matter its mass. It's actually a really complicated uh, concept 
if you want to go deep with this, but to, to keep it short, it's, it's important. Why is it important? Because this shows that particles get their mass from this Higgs boson. And if you think about it, like, leptons and quarks, they, they seem like a really complex concept, but they were only discovered in the 60s and the 70s and until the 90s, but if you think about it, the Higgs boson was such a complex particle that was not discovered until 2012 or so. So it's an important discovery in the field of science. And they, of course there are more to be discovered, but we just know that it it's a particle that gives other particles the mass, this Higgs boson. So yes, uh, if you want to do some more research, go ahead. There are a lot of good sources in the internet, but I'm going to stop right here. Thank you for watching. I hope this video was helpful, helpful to you. And uh, I hope this got you kind of interested in the field of uh, particle physics. And it's a really interesting field. I mean, if, if I had more time, I would do more research into, for example, quantum chromodynamics, which is way too complicated for me to research in this field because it's only the IB standard level course but it's definitely an interesting topic so if you have time you should do some research on it. So yeah thank you for watching